Hello, everybody. It's time. I'm glad for everybody that is attending today. And uh, I decided to do this cholesterol live stream because of the ongoing continuous questions that we receive about it. And we get new people in our community all the time. And um, they don't know what we all know. So, so let's see who we got so far. We have CJ, Susanna, Pabeter, me, Amar, Robert, D. Tambury, Menkees, Tammy, Little Carnivore. So I'm going to start by um, showing you something. Let me put my screen on full screen. Okay, so check out this shirt. Let me get my necklace out of the way. It says, I love bacon, which I do. I thought this bacon shirt was appropriate for this live stream. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to find out from those of you that are here is... If you are, let's say, fairly new, less three months or less, just put new in the comments. I'd like to see how many kind of newbies are here. Coffee's uh, tea's too hot. <laughs> yeah, um, Sherry, I got it off of uh, Amazon, lovely Amazon. Um, I got three of them and I just decided to wait to wear this one today. Christine is new. Uh, I think somebody, Little Carnivore, first one of two, first time here. Great, glad to have you. The berries are on vacation. And the reason I chose this time and this day to do this was to help fill the void because they're gone. Okay, so Richard, Ryan, Cheryl, Hal, Lori, new people. I Part of what I'm going to do here, once we get a few more people on, is I'm going to give you a little down and dirty uh, tour of our PhD community and Mighty Networks, because um, I have a feeling that people don't utilize all the great information that's in there. So I'm gonna show you some of that. And there's a lot of cholesterol information in there. And I'm also going to um, try and show you Dr. Barry's YouTube channel because I would say probably 80% of the questions that get asked, Dr. Barry has a video in his YouTube. And you'll get a faster and a quicker answer to your question if you go there and watch one of the YouTube videos instead of waiting for someone to respond to you. Okay, so I'll take questions in a little bit. Um, if you could put, like, like Dr. Barry likes us to do, if you could put three cues in front of your question, it's easier for me to see it. Al, a CPHC is a certified primal health coach. Okay, so first thing I want to do, let's see how many people, if I can see how many people are here. Hold on, I'm going to look at my phone for a second. 68 people, okay. So, um, and I think over 100 uh, RSVP to this, so... So I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm going to share um, certain sections of the PhD community in Mighty Networks. So just bear with me. Oops, let me get rid of this. Okay, present, share screen. Dr. Ken Berry, share. Okay, so <clears throat> this is my desktop on my laptop. And over here where it says PhD, Dr. Ken Berry is a whole menu of things. And when you first join, you're supposed to watch some orientation videos 
Um, I'm not sure if everybody has done that. If you haven't, please go back and watch those orientation videos. Start here, help desk. Um, watch the replay. If you click on where it says watch the replay, um, you're going to see stuff that's already been done. Like this was two weeks ago, this was one month ago. Neil and his wife did a book discussion. So that's watch the replay. Announcements from Dr. Barry here. That's usually where I'm going to go by newest. That's usually where, yeah. So see here, Alyssa um, helps manage their schedule. And so when they're not going to be available, she'll post something. For example, it says out of the office, April 6th to the 14th. The Berries will be out of town to San Antonio beginning 4-6. So there will be no live streams from then on. So, so please pay attention to that. And then over here are all the coaches' corners. You can see all the names here. And then... Um, Keto recipes, ketovore recipes, carnivore recipes. This is Teresa's uh, baby here going natural. Um, what I want to go here is this one where it says PhD team recommended books and videos. This is a wealth of information. Please spend some time here. I'm going to click on it. And since we're having a cholesterol talk, I'm going to point out a particular section here. Now, um, since this Kim Howerton and Dr. Barry lab book popped up first, this is uh, we'll talk about that really quick. You can order this book on Amazon, and not only does it give you the uh, optimal, normal and optimal lab uh, ranges, it also gives you a lot of commentary about various different illnesses. So please don't skip over anything. If you're going to get this book, read the whole book. Um, Kevin had po posted this back in 2022, but it still uh, applies today. The basic reading list. And these were things that he was recommending. Lies, of course, our favorite doctor's book. Why We Get Sick, Keto Clarity. The Diabetes Code is the uh, Jason Fung, the um, fasting guru. The Obesity Code, again, another one by Jason Fung. So anyways, go in there. The Keto Chow Daily Minerals is what Dr. Barry helped the Keto Chow uh, owners um, curate. <clears throat> and then this Brain Energy is by um, Christopher Palmer. Excellent book. You can get it on Audible. David Diamond on Deception and Cholesterol Research. Okay, please look at this video because that's what we're talking about, cholesterol. I'm going to... Um, Go down here. Now, this is what I want to show to you. David Diamond, Ben Bickman, and Paul Mason Staten article. If you click on that, there's a PDF with the article that the three of them wrote. Uh, this is something you can download, print off, and take to your doctor if he's pushing drugs on you. So I'm going to open it. So here's what it looks like. David Diamond, Benjamin Bickman, and Paul Mason. I've given this to a few people. It is 15 pages. So, okay, let's see. This one here that says, I'm addicted to, I just watched rewatched this again this afternoon before I went live here because Dr. Sybus calls himself the carb addiction doc because he realized he was a carb addicted person. Excellent video about how to pull yourself out of a carb addiction situation. So I really highly suggest that you watch that. And the principles of a PhD was a talk that Dr. Barry gave at one of the, I think it was low carb something or other last year. Uh, so anyways, this is an excellent um, resource. Please uh, flow through this and look at this was an, an audio, or, yeah, an audio that Kim and Dr. Barry did about the Common Sense Labs book. Um, so please take your time, go through this stuff. Um, some very good stuff in here. You could help you learn a lot. So now, Ketovore 101, Ketovore Carnivore Friendly Doctors. Um, this is not super well organized, but if you're looking for somebody in your local community or someplace where you live, if you go through here, you might be able to, if you up here where it says search Keto Carnivore Friendly Doctors, you could 
type in a search term and see if you can find something. Or you can, if you can't find anything, just post. Anybody know of a doctor, a uh, keto, carnivore-friendly doctor in Detroit, Michigan, or something like that? Um, when we do live challenges, it'll probably be here. Um, these are the different support levels of uh, memberships. Most people are either at the 5, the 12, or the 20. And that's pretty much the um, down and dirty of the uh, PhD community and Mighty Networks. <clears throat> Anybody have any have any questions about the uh, before I go on and look at some of this stuff that we got going? Anybody have any questions about accessing PhD community and Mighty Networks? Yeah, the, I've got a background thing on. Um, Okay, I'm gonna put this stop sharing and I'm gonna go back to our normal thing. Now I'm gonna put up a graphic here and the graphic is the traditional lipid labs that Dr. Berry recommends. So I'm gonna put that up and I'm gonna go full screen. So now this HDL male and HDL female is newer, is a little bit newer. That wasn't in, in the original book. But as you can notice, and I'm gonna look at my, uh, my copy that I have here, because I can't see that small, but um, they're not too far off for the eight, between the male and female HDL. So it says optimal greater than 50 uh, for male and greater than 60 for women. And then the LDL, to C note triglycerides and the VLDL we don't talk about in our community very often. Um, basically, what we focus on is HDL and triglycerides. So the common, the generic rule is if your HDL is greater than 50 or 60, and your triglycerides is less than 100, you're good to go. You don't need to worry about oh the doctor wants you to take a statin and so on and so forth. So, um, and one other thing I want to post here, feel free to, I'm going to, like I said, this will be ready for replay. So if you want to print this off, um, I don't have the hard copy of the book. I have the um, digital copy, but I don't think they sell that anymore. So I had the digital copy. And if you'll notice that um, the far, the, um, there's two columns with units, measures of units, and the first one that says U.S. is United States. And the second one is IU, which is international. So those people in Canada or other foreign countries from the United States, that's used, they usually use the millimole measurement. So, okay, before we go any further, I want to put this up here because I see a bunch of people typing lab values in the uh, question field. And this is not medical or diagnostic treatment. It's not medical advice. This is just for your, these are opinions and based on anecdotal evidence and what I know from working with Dr. Barry. So if you uh, have some specific questions, you need to talk to your doctor about it. Okay. Now I'm going back to this chat and I'm going to start from the top and see what I can find for questions. Okay, little carnivore question, one of two. First time here, welcome. 100% carnivore since, I don't know when. Lost 48 pounds, A1C was 7.4, now 5.4, awesome. Fasting insulin 6.4, which is okay. Glucose is 98, is 98 from uh, down from 155. Um, all tests better, blood pressure now. Even 120 over 82 is not a bad blood pressure, but 109 over 69 is perfect. So, <clears throat> okay, I'm looking for a little carnivores second. Let's see if I can find anything. Here we go. Question two of two. New stopped statin and blood pressure. My cholesterol went up, LDL is up. My doctor wanted to raise my meds. CAC 21, carotid artery normal, thank you. CAC of 21 is 
literally fine. Uh, mine was 10. Um, now, you can see on the screen, I have these values here. Um, we don't look at LDL and total cholesterol anymore. We just don't. In fact, you know, the thumbnail I put on this, and that's why some people are confused, they thought Dr. Berry was going to be here, is because I had his picture on it that said cholesterol is good for you. It is. So, but the reason that doctors keep harping on it is because they don't know. They haven't learned the new evidence that's out there. So don't worry about it, little carnivore. You should be fine. Okay, let me go back up here. Um, Christine started to say something and then her question dropped off. Hi, Cherry. Uh, yeah, we already talked about that. Okay, Robert Johns. Okay, Christine says, how, do, how does new meds for weight loss affect cholesterol? Christine, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Save that question for a Dr. Barry live stream. And if you could get more specific on what meds you're talking about. Okay, Cherry. Cherry's been playing with keto, high protein for a little over a year. I need to get back to eating clean. Been on vacation and ate, ate at restaurants all week. I'm feeling the effects. Was even keto? Yeah. Okay. Let me just give you a little example. Example. I've been eating keto carnivore for about six years. Started with kind of dirty keto, ate the fat bombs with the chocolate coating and all that kind of stuff. Made my own, but, you know, still ate them. And then eventually, um, and we used to eat a lot of broccoli and cauliflower, asparagus once in a while, and um, um, maybe mashed cauliflower, stuff like that. So I started to transition more to carnivore. My husband still, oh, cat, we ate a lot of cabbage, like coleslaw that I make myself, that kind of stuff. So, um, and once I switched to primarily car, I'm going to say like Nisha does, meat-based, meaning probably 98% meat. And then I tried to introduce some broccoli and some cabbage, and I was miserable. So I think once you clear out your, your gut, of the um, lectins and all the other stuff, uh, phytates that come from the vegetable, and you put it back in there again. If your stomach and your intestine says, I don't like it, that means you shouldn't really eat it. Okay, let's see. Frank says, I've been watching all the videos about cholesterol and lean mass hyperresponder. I've learned a lot, but I'm still left with questions. And my doctor is suggesting a, a statin. Just remember, Frank, that you control your health journey, not your doctor. Your doctor is there to advise you, but he cannot make you take anything that you don't want to take. Um, so in the show notes for this, I put a link to the Lean Mass Hyperresponder website. And this is what, kind of like what you're going to see. I printed this off. And... And it's cholesterol, it's basic cholesterol code, cholesterolcode.com, uh, Dave Feldman's site. So um, it says, generally speaking, lean mass hyperresponders have the following lipid profile, an LDL of 200 or higher, an HDL of 80 or higher, triglycerides of 70 or lower. Also, um, common characteristics of a lean mass hyperresponder often lean with low body fat, less than 20% for men and less than 23% for women. Usually a moderate to very fit, men are even, many are even very athletic. Usually low carb, typically less than 25. Now they're saying net carbs, but uh, put that out of your mind because the berry method is not net, it's total. Other possible commonalities, uh, lower blood ketones levels and sedentary low carbers often 0.3 to 1.0. General higher fasting glucose, probably through adaptive glucose sparing, often 90 to 105, and greater difficulty doing multi day fasting. So um, I'm not going to read all of this to you. You can go to the website that's in the show notes. They do have a Facebook group, with which I have signed up for. And I was looking at that. I took a little time and looked at that today, and I found some interesting comments on there. So 
<laughs> Mare's cooking, so she might not be able to say anything. Okay, Rob, 58-year-old carnivore for 27 months, 70 pounds down, oh, awesome, 40 more to lose. Lab results from last week, triglycerides, 222 LDL, 392 HDL, 37, how to lower triglycerides and raise HDL besides eating meat and no carbs. Yeah, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Um, I'm not sure, let's see, carnivore for 27 months. Um, we do have a member in our community that's been battling triglycerides. And I think he, um, I can't think of his name. He's frequently on the Zoom call. But um, one thing that came up in the last couple of months was if you're a big coffee drinker, um, consider filtering your coffee, like a paper filter that doesn't have any chlorine or bleach to make it white. Um, sometimes not filtering the coffee can have a, a negative outcome on that. Um, make sure you lift heavy things. Um, make sure you eat plenty of fatty meat. Don't uh, portion control. Eat until you feel comfortable. Not eat to where you're so stuffed you can't hardly breathe. But because Dr. Barry always says, eat until you're comfortably stuffed. And sometimes I like to reword that and say, eat until you're comfortably full. You know, like when you have a Thanksgiving meal and you've, you've eaten, you know, a bunch of turkey and all the fixings and you're just like so stuffed, you can't hardly stand it. Don't eat that stuffed. Eat until you're just satiated. You feel full. You're good. Frank, my weight and fat are decreasing while my cholesterol is increasing. Uh, you know, Frank, look at the lean mass hyperresponder website that I posted in the, um, in the show notes. Um, Robert Johnson, if you look on my screen, it has the, now we don't look at total cholesterol. And I'm not sure if that's what you mean. You say, what is the optimum range of cholesterol? We don't look at total cholesterol anymore. So the ones that I have on the screen are the ones that we um, that we look at. Hi, Lloyd. Cindy, how can I set feed to show most recent posts? I've tried numerous times that always seem to be give something posted six months ago, the four hours ago, et cetera, not so consistently. Okay, I'm gonna flip back to the, I'm gonna share my screen again and flip back to show Cindy. So, okay, so there's a drop down thing here. There's one that says show everything. And if you click on it, it gives you specifics. And then there's this one sorted by last activity. I always say, I always sort by the newest. Now, sometimes it reads the newest as the last five minutes or the last week or something, but that seems to give me the most recent posts. Okay, let me put those lipid labs back up here. Okay, Jeanette. Total cholesterol, 400, we don't care. Triglycerides, 51, good. HDL, 96, good. We don't care about VLDL, LDL. The ratio, we don't really care about. CRP is excellent. Fasting insulin is excellent. Not diabetic or overweight. Should I be concerned about? No, don't be concerned. Frank Jones. Labs in September, December, and April. Weight down from 228, almost 229 to 215, to 212. Oh, okay, scale, say, scale says fat is declining, muscle remains the same, cholesterol up, we don't care. Um, triglycerides down, yep, 86, that's perfect. You're good. <laughs> yes, Dennis, eat some fatty ribeyes for me. Tonight is our liver night. We're having, my husband has onions with his liver, so he has bacon, onions, and liver, and I just have bacon and liver. Okay. Okay, Dennis, okay. Pickle. 
If we are a $5 subscriber, are we able to watch replays of lives that are for higher level subscribers? I don't think so. Frank, got it. Looking for questions I can bring back to my doctor since it keeps saying stat when I walk in. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, Bob Eater. Oh, okay. You're talking about uh, H, the settings. Okay, Philip Rickman, good evening. First time on the live stream. Glad to have you here. I have been off on I have been on blood pressure meds, but trying to wean myself off of it. My blood pressure is trending down. Is it generally well, that's a question, a discussion you need to have with your doctor. Uh, make sure to go to Dr. Barry's YouTube channel and watch his blood pressure video. And I would say um, track your blood pressure daily for as long as you can remember to do it. Um, track it, you know, like a couple of times a day. Watch his um, blood pressure video, track it. And then if it's trending down, as you say, then show this uh, chart or your the list to your doctor and say, hey, when can I get off of these? Or can I start, you know, can I start cutting back on this? That's right, Pavader. Just remember, LDL is good for you. Helps protect against strokes and heart and heart risk. It's good. It's um, also been um, uh, some of the studies that are out there have said it's really good for women too. Little crab. Can I stop niacin without fear? I can't answer that. That's something you need to discuss with your doctor. Little carnivore. Okay, where are we at? Uh, little carnivore. Carnivore since December 23rd, age 71. Sorry, missed that a bit nervous. That's fine. If you want me to get rid of the annual lipid labs, I can get rid of it. Um, I will remove it. Then you can see my beautiful face. Okay. Oh, I want to, I'm going to share or do a screen share with you guys again. I want to show you Dr. Barry's YouTube channel because um, I have a feeling you guys aren't real familiar with it. Okay, it's pulling it up here. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen again. Ken Berry YouTube. Okay, Ken Berry YouTube. Now, you notice here there's several columns. Um, as you see here, all the Monday Night Lives are showing up. Um, and then there's like popular videos. There's He has some 101 playlists. There's a carnivore diet playlist. There's a keto diet playlist, fasting playlist, men's health, type two, fatty liver. When I'm searching for a video, I click on this one that says videos. And if you look here, this little hourglass, if I'm looking for cholesterol, like we're talking about now, I'm going to type in cholesterol. Hit my en enter key. Okay, here's a bunch of cholesterol stuff. Sad truth about cholesterol, keto increased your cholesterol, raise your HDL in five easy steps, statin deception. Okay, now the shorts, I'm not a fan of shorts because I have a longer attention span, but he's doing this because the newer generation has a very short attention span, so he tries to get the biggest bang for his buck out to the general public. So. Um, and then, of course, all the lives will be here. Um, podcasts. Uh, yeah. We don't really do a traditional podcast here. Playlists. I've kind of already showed you this, but playlists. Um, for those of you that don't know, Dr. Barry's been on a doc two documentaries called Reversed. So... 
<clears throat> this particular one is about the carnivore diet. There's a cancer, lab testing, what lab results mean. So there's all kinds of stuff here. Scroll through here. You can't hurt anything. Community. Um, he just posted this. I haven't watched it yet. Medicines that worsen insulin resistance. Somebody asked that question. A diet, somebody asked a question, will diet pills, I think, mess with your, ins give you insulin resistance or something. There you go. There's your video. So, so please look through here, as I said in the beginning, um, a lot of times you can find the answer to your question quicker by going here than by posting to a coach or a PhD member or something like that. You might, you can find your answer in less than five minutes a lot of times. So use this section. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing again. I'm gonna go back to you guys. True health, any other studies to bring into the doctor besides the one you shared already? Well, below every Dr. Bear YouTube video, maybe the very first ones he did, they're not there, but the last couple of years, he's been posting links to studies. So look at the video that speaks to you that you want to know that you want to bring information to your doctor. And there should be links to studies there. Ryan, carnivore four months, EGFR down from 67, which is great, but cholesterol, don't care. Uh, trigs are a little bit high, but they're getting better, HDL. 50, West 3 for HDL has come up awesome. We don't care about the LDL. Am I on the right track? I'm possibly considered a lean mass hyper responder. Ryan, I'm sorry, I can't answer that LMHR question. Go to that website that I have posted and do your research. Peggy, labs last year, then this year. Keto or ketovore times six years. A1C, 5.4, 5.4, glucose, 117, 105. Uh, insulin 6.1, 6.5, total cholesterol, we don't care. Um, HDL 67, 72, good triglycerides 43 to 110, LDL 121. Looks, sounds good. The questions I'm answering are in the chat, but I will try to bring them up on the screen. <clears throat> Let me get rid of something. Okay. Uh, Lowell, you were the last comment. So, um, if the next, when the next question comes up, let me see if I can do this show. Yeah. Okay. I will do that <clears throat> now just to step back a little bit. For those of you that are new that typed in new at the beginning of the live stream, let me just give you my personal background for those of you that aren't members of my coaching corner. Um, I live in Escondido, California, which is 30 miles north of San Diego. The weather here is pretty much beautiful all year round. In the wintertime, we do have cold evenings and cold mornings, but now we're, we're getting into our nice time of the year. So I'm a registered nurse, retired. Uh, my specialty was for the last 10 years, I would say that I worked was open heart surgery and cardiology. Um, from there, I went into the quality improvement risk management department and worked there for several years. And then I moved on to a firm, a private firm that did um, revenue management. And I worked there for about three years. And then um, I went to a company that makes IV infusion pumps. And that company's name is BD, Becton Dickinson. Uh, they pretty much have market share for their IV infusion pumps in the United States. Um, and I worked for them, and believe it or not, in their complaint department for almost 10 years. So I retired in 1999, December of 1999. Now, just to, to pick, press a little pause right there, that's my work history. Um, I found Dr. Barry in... I think it was 2017-ish, something like that. Uh, my husband and I had gone to, we had, we belonged to a wine club here locally, and we had gone to a, a wine to pickup party. And 
they placed us at a table with another couple. And, you know, as when you meet first meet somebody for the first time, you say, what do you do? All this and that and the other. And we started chatting with them and we found out that they were distributors and sellers of what we call exogenous ketones, a ketone, ketone that you reconstitute in water and you drink. And they were telling us, you know, they could eat all the carbs they wanted, you know, like they were eating, like at this wine pickup party we had. You know, pasta, and, you know, breadsticks and all this kind of carbohydrate type of stuff. They said they can eat stuff like that and then they can go back to their normal life and drink this exogenous ketones and, you know, they lose all this weight and blah, 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 blah. So um, my husband and I are like, mm, I don't know about that. So anyways, we started just exploring. We started, you know, doing YouTube searches and we bought, they gave us a couple of packets of it as a samples to try. And we're both, we're both gym goers and have been gym goers for forever. Um, <clears throat> so um, it did, you know, give us great workouts and boosted our energy. But, you know, we were just still, you know, kind of questioning this. So we were doing searches on YouTube and Dr. Barry popped up and he was at a uh, uh, I posted the video in the PhD community, but it's probably gotten buried since then. But he was at a, a, a low carb event. And I forget who this guy was, but he was interviewing Dr. Barry. And he said to Dr. Barry, um, what did you, what did you have to eat today? And Dr. Barry says, nothing. He goes, I haven't eaten for, I don't know how many hours. So he was starting, you know, and then he had, prior to that, he had shared that he had gone carnivore not too long ago. And so then we started looking up all things, Dr. Barry, and got totally um, engrossed with his videos. And there was um, a keto event happening in 2019 up at Salt Lake City put on by the Keto Chow people. It was called Keto Salt Lake. We were going to go. In fact, we bought tickets and whole nine yards to go. And then COVID, you know, came and knocked that out of the water. So, um, but just to back up a bit, before COVID, Dr. Barry was here talking at an event in San Diego. And it was at a hotel right across uh, the road from the waterfront. And it just ha so happened to be my birthday. And we were on a tour. We like to do these local things. So we were on a local San Diego tour. and. Um, we got off the tour bus because you could get on and off and went to the hotel. And I said, is Dr. Barry in there? I didn't have tickets to this. And they said, yeah, he's in there listening to so-and-so talk. And I said, do you think there's any way that I could talk to him? And so, uh, sure. So they took me, they took us in there and we sat in the back of the room listening to this speaker. And I'm looking around to see where Dr. Barry is. And he was sitting up in the front on the left-hand side and he was engrossed in his phone about something. So I said to my husband, if he walks this way, I'm going to get up and run up there and talk to him. So eventually he came our way and we stopped and we got up and talked to him and for five minutes, maybe max, took our, you know, traditional, you know, picture with him and moved on. And so then when, when they finally brought Keto Salt Lake back a couple of years later, after the whole COVID thing had blown over, um, Dr. Barry had a meetup and um, a bunch of us, you know, got to meet him and we were able to, to track him down again after the whole event was over and I offered my services to him and, and that's how I got started with Dr. Barry. So, <clears throat> so that's been how we finding him and um, we saw him. No, we, we haven't seen him in person anymore. I mean, as a coach working uh, for him and Nisha, we have frequent uh, meetings and stuff. But as far as in-person thing, I haven't met, met him since then. So, oh, okay. Terry said she was at the event I'm talking about. I think that was the last San Diego event that he went to because I think he decided he, I can't remember why he didn't go anymore. There's a reason for it. Okay, so let me go back. Uh, Mark Contreras, people new to PhD are often intimidated. Oops, I'm sorry, let me push this up. 
people new to the PhD are often intimidated by doctors wanting to prescribe statins when total cholesterol goes up. What's your advice to them? Um, I would just say, thank you very much. I appreciate your advice, but I want to think about that. And the link, one of the links here in the show notes is the link to that study that I told you that, um, David Diamond, you can take, print that study and take that study to them. Yeah. See, Pub Eater, that's exactly what your Pub Eater said. Ask the doctor to provide the studies. Yep. Uh, Peggy's asking why our triglycerides go up so much. Well, you don't have to pick up the script if you don't want to. The triglycerides is not going to help. I mean, the script, the statin script, if it is a statin, it's not going to help the triglycerides. Uh, new comments. Well, yeah, Pa Beater, that's true, but we do have some unusual. The individual I was talking about that's usually on the Zoom calls had like zero carbs for years and he still had severely elevated. He ended up taking niacin um, and that helped him. There was something else he was taking, but I'm sorry, I can't remember what that was. The thing with the niacin is though, especially in men, uh, some men mistake it, that it gives you kind of a flush and a warm and sometimes a tight feeling in your chest. And sometimes people think they're having a heart attack, but they really aren't. So sometimes the best way to take that niacin is to take it before you go to bed. Uh, that way you'll be asleep when it kicks in. A family members having kidney issues and, and his doctor told him keto was bad for the kidneys. No, it's not. They are allowing him to do a modified. Now, they are allowing him. Does he cook his own food? Does his wife cook his own food? Um, if he's not locked up in their barn, like Dr. Barry frequently says, he can eat a keto, a regular keto diet. So go to Dr. Barry's um, YouTube and look at the um, carnivore and keto 101 playlists. Okay. I've been doing keto since the beginning of this year. Triglycerides 86, HDL 50, and cholesterol. Um, triglycerides and HDL are the only two you're worried about. And yes, they are fine. Sherry, for some reason, you posted your question twice. I think I already talked about it. So, yeah, Pabeter, um, look up Dr. Berry and kidneys. Meat and animal products are good to help kidneys heal. Now, one thing I will tell you. At the end of May, I know it's a little bit far away, but at the end of May, Dr. Barry and I are going to be interviewing uh, a YouTuber, very popular YouTuber in the RV space that had kidney cancer, and it was so bad they had to take out one of his kidneys. This is a couple of years ago. And um, he was noodling around on YouTube and looking for you know, videos and articles about, you know, how to keep clear of cancer because he's got one kidney left now and he can't afford afford to lose that other kidney. Otherwise, you know, he dies or he's on dialysis for the rest of his life. So wouldn't you know it, guess who he bumped into? Yes, Dr. Barry. And he saw Dr. Barry's video that said, cancer loves sugar. And it does. Think about this. Any of you that have ever had, um, oh, what's that study, that imaging study? Forget the name of the imaging study. But they're looking at cancer tumors. And they want you to be on a low-carbohydrate diet for a certain period of time before you go in. And then when you go in there, they inject you with a dye that has a glucose component to it. And the glucose shoots right to the tumor. So when he found out about this, he was like, PET scan, P-E-T scan. <laughs> My brain went dead for a minute. P-E-T. Yeah, thank you, Terry. <laughs> I was just typing it as I saw it pop up. PET scan. So about a year after his surgery, 
he's when he found this video and he went carnivore and not only has he uh, lost weight but his kidney function labs and everything is are beautiful and he's like i'm not going back so if you want to put that on your bucket list to watch may 31st it'll be a live stream dr um Barry will do that, like the medical, and I'll just do the Marsha stuff, asking him questions, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Um, the one thing that I did learn about kidney disease is the EGFR, if it gets up there too high, look to see how much water you're making yourself drink. Don't ever make yourself, force yourself to drink water. You only need to drink water when you're thirsty. And this is what my friend that I'm going to interview, his name is Kevin. Um, he was forcing himself to drink like a gallon of water a day because he lives in the Arizona high desert. And he says, well, I'll get dehydrated if I don't drink all this water. No. So I told him, I, I just confirmed that with Dr. Barry. And he said, yes, tell him to cut back on the water. He did. And wouldn't you know, the next time he had those labs drawn, they were great. So don't force yourself to drink water. Um, I don't know enough about nano, natokinase to comment. I apologize. <laughs> Coach Marsh Aaron loves a PhD. Guess what? <laughs> My wife had kidney cancer and had to have one of her kidneys removed. She's diabetic and is carnivore resistant. I'm slowly adding more meat. What do you mean by carnivore resistant? I mean, she it creeps her out. She gags or uh, what do you, I, I don't quite understand what you mean by that. Um, do you have any comments about the struggles of weight loss halt after thyroidectomy and need to be on thyroid replacement? <clears throat> yeah, um, you know what? Are you getting a full complement of thyroid labs done? Um, let me see if I can. I'm going to be silent for a minute because I'm going to look up the thyroid labs so that I can um, make sure you know which ones to get. Okay. Okay, I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see the thyroid lab you need to get. Why does this say Thompson? Oh, well, that's not it. Huh, it's not. For some reason I can't get it. To, oh, you know why? I can't get it to pop up because it's a PDF file. So here's the thyroid labs. Make sure you're getting these thyroids done. T, a free T4, a free T3, a reverse T3, a TSH, a thyroid para, paradoxase, that's a mouthful, P-E-R-O-X-I-D-A-S-E, and thyroglobulin antibodies. Make sure you're getting all of those. Many doctors only want to order a TSH and a T4. Uh, so first of all, we need to make sure you're getting the right medication. Um, a lot of doctors want to order uh, Synthroid, which is fake. It's not real thyroid hormone. So, and Dr. Barry always promotes an, uh, a desiccated thyroid. It's like NP thyroid, nature thyroid. Um, there's another one out there, but I can't think of it. Okay, so Pabita said she doesn't want to give up her veg. Well, that's fine. She can eat the veg, just as long as they're not starchy veg. Well, Pabeter, that's a no on the pasta. Okay, so Terry said, TSH, free T4, free T3, and reverse T3. Uh, you need the two thyroid antibodies. Well, they'll be relevant because it'll sell, it'll let you, let her know if she's on the right medication. Gracie's asking about seed oils. Yes. <laughs> um, 
Now, people get confused with that term, seed oils. So what we're talking about is things like corn, soybean, canola. It's um, a seed, and they have to use a chemical process to extract the most minute amount of oil from it. It's not good for you. So yes, that can cause a problem. And no, you don't need to take, take statins. I believe you don't need to take statins. Frank, pasta equals zucchini noodles and spaghetti squash. Absolutely. Um, I'm not crazy about the zucchini uh, noodles, but I like the uh, spaghetti squash. Okay, let me take this away. And let me just pop this back up. Since people are asking for recommendations, I can't do that technically as a coach. It's not, it's outside of my scope of um, what my scope of practice is. So um, the only reason I know so much is because I'm an, an RN. I've been looking at labs for my entire career. I mean, I graduated from nursing school when I was 19 years old. So anyways, so I can't really, I can say you don't need statins, but I really can't tell you that you don't need statins because I don't know what your specifics are. Now, here's a little side note for you. Um, and this is a personal note. My husband had his has been monitoring his CAC score for many years. His father died from sudden cardiac death. And so um, the last time he had his done, it was like 1500. And the normal thing with that is it goes up normally without any intervention by five to 10% a year. And oh, by the way, if you take statins, what the statins do is in some respects, they might be good because what they do is there's two kinds of plaque. There's what they call a soft plaque and a hard plaque and the hard plaque is the calcium. So the statins will solidify the soft plaque into hard plaque, which is really better for you than the soft plaque because the soft plaque is what will break off and cause a problem. So um, just keep that in mind when you're deciding whether you want to take statins or not. And you know what? There's a lot of research out there. Look at the Lean Mass Hyper Responder website. Look at the playlist I posted for um, cholesterol videos by Dr. Barry. Um, look in the um, PhD community. Uh, just you guys have so many resources. Thanks, Frank. No medical advice needed. It's just good to hear someone say what I thought I heard the video from Dr. Barry when the physician keeps getting very concerned. Okay, so let me tell you another personal story. My husband was seating the couple of cardiologists ago. He went through the ringer. He went through all these different extra tests and so on and so forth. And the doctor put him on 40 milligrams of one of the statin drugs and it just wiped him out. He couldn't hardly move. His, he was worn out. His muscles were aching, blah, blah, blah. So he says, oh, no. I said, you need to quit taking that. So he quit taking it. We go in there and we told him that he decided to quit, quit taking it. And unfortunately, he knew that I was a nurse. And I was sitting in one chair behind him. He had his computer screen in front of him. My husband was sitting more closer to him. And he turned around and he looked at me and he was going like this. He says, you're a nurse. Can't you tell your doctor, uh, your husband to take those statins? I said, no, we've talked about this. I totally support his decision. So um, use your resources. Do your research, print off that article by David Diamond. And I think it's David Diamond, Ben Bickman, and Paul Mason, I think, is the three people that collaborated on that paper. Actually, I have it right there. It is. And the title of the paper is Statin Therapy is Not Warranted for a Person with a High LDL Cholesterol on a Low Carb Diet. David M. Diamond, Benjamin T. Bickman, and Paul Mason. Print that, print that study out. Keep it, look at it. Now, it's going to be gibberish for some people because there's, you know, a lot of high level sciencey terms in there, but you know, just um, take that into your doctor and say, here, please review this. My doctor had me on statins for 20 years. Now I hear that statins harden the plaque. Yes, I just, I just 
Yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> it's uh, the soft plaque. So they make the soft plaque, but supposedly from what I've been told, it's a soft plaque that breaks off and causes a heart attack or a stroke or whatever. It's not the hard plaque. The hard plaque, think of the, the plaque as, say you're inflamed. You've been eating a standard American diet and a lot of junk food and stuff. Um, Jai King, it's in the show notes. Down below this video, it's in the show notes. It's there. Um, so what I'm going to say is um, they say that the hard plaque won't break off and cause a problem. It's a soft plaque. Um, he hasn't had one for a couple of years, Aaron. Yes, Gracie's putting some good information. Statin side effects, memory loss, joint pain, erectile dysfunction for men, and uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, and type 2 diabetes. I interviewed a PhD member probably about a year ago now. His name is Scott Lopez. Go back into the community and look up the video. He was placed on statins, and it nearly made him disabled. And now he's di diabetic. So now he's got to manage diabetes. So don't, you know. Now, let me just tell you, back to um, this one. Uh, after discussing with Dr. Barry and looking at research and stuff, what, what he decided was to do a low dose, five milligram Crestor per day. It doesn't, it's not going to do a whole lot, but it's it makes him a little bit, more comfortable that the doctor is comfortable. So the doctor is comfortable with that. Absolutely, double Ds. The information we have at our fingertips by being a part of this community makes us way more informed than many doctors. And just think about it. We have a majority of our members are $5 a month members. Where can you go for $5 a month and get all this um, wealth of information. Where can you go? You can't unless you do the YouTube videos, but here, yes, you can do Dr. Barry's YouTube videos. You can do several other YouTube videos, but here you have the opportunity to get further information other than just a pre-recorded YouTube video. So, wow, guys, time is up. Um, I'm going to let you all get to your normal lives. Here's another quick look at the lipid panel. Anybody wants to write those down or go back later and print it off. Um, and just remember the HDL and the, and the triglycerides are the two that Dr. Berry focuses on. Um, I had mentioned a commentary in um, the show notes that people, a lot of people ask about these particle sizes, LP, little a, and all that kind of stuff. And we get comments about this all the time, but um, Dr. Berry's not, um, he does not feel there's enough research out there to support that that's any meaningful information. So for right now, now the part of the lean mass hyper responder, hyper responder study did include that. So go back and um, click on that link that gives you the website and you can go and read about that. This is an interesting comment here been type two for 25 years, never aware of keto or carnivore, and I've ever said type two could be reversed. Yes, it can. <laughs> okay, folks, uh, I'm going to let you all go. I'm going to go and start eating my liver, and I will see you all in the network. Bye, everybody.